members are encouraged to attend our quarterly business meeting this Wednesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. This meeting will take place via WebEx video conference and requires member registration. The registration form is on our website, KetteringMinistries.org. Today, Sunday, April 25th, is the last day to register. Children ages 5 to 12, join the Children's Ministry on Saturday, May 1st from 10 to 11 a.m. to make a special gift for mom and dad to celebrate Mother's and Father's Days. Parents, register your child online starting today, Sunday, April 11th through Tuesday, April 27th. Parents will be contacted regarding distribution of the craft supplies. For more information, contact the Children's Ministry via email at children at KetteringMinistries.org. Parents and guardians, have you ever wondered what you can do to help your children know God and continue to stay in a growing and thriving relationship with Him? Then join Youth Director Ryan Richardson via the Zoom platform as he shares research developed by LifeWay to explore the top 10 influencers of spiritual health. This event is open to parents and guardians of all ages. To register, please send an email to Ryan Richardson at rrichardson at KetteringMinistries.org. All Kettering members are invited to participate in the 2021 National Day of Prayer on Thursday, May 6, 2021. This year's theme is Lord, Pour Out Your Love, Life, and Liberty. The prayer ministry will host two virtual prayer sessions on the WebEx platform from 12 to 1 p.m. and from 6 to 7 p.m. Registration is required and available on our website. Spots are limited, so be sure to register before May 4th, 2021. Point of contact is Dominic Miller at 301-627-9500. Greetings, Kettering. May is Mental Health Month, and on Saturday, May 8th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Health and Wellness Ministry will host a virtual mental health workshop. Register on our website through Wednesday, May 5th. We have guest speakers and organizations that will discuss mental health as it relates to women, men, and young ladies ages 12 to 21. See you there! The Missions Ministry will be having its Spring into Service Outreach on Saturday, May 15th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will provide light yard work to beautify the outer homes of our precious seniors. Please note, COVID-19 safe practices and adequate protection will be provided. Those who are interested, please register via the KBC website. Did your child make the honor roll for the third quarter? In order to recognize the achievements of our third quarter honor roll students, the scholarship ministry requests that a copy of the student's report card be emailed to scholarship at KetteringMinistries.org or faxed to the administrative office at 301-780-8578 no later than Friday, May 7th, 2021. If you have questions, please contact Cynthia Brown at 301-627-9500 or on scholarship at KetteringMinistries.org. Attention, C. Brown. Attention senior adults age 55 and up. The Education Ministry is having a discipleship class for seniors addressing the subject of the essentials of Christianity starting Saturday, May 15th through Saturday, June 26th. It will take place on the WebEx platform, so you will need to register. Registration begins today on the church website. All seniors 55 and up are welcome. Point of contact is Pastor Williams at andre.williams at KetteringMinistries.org. For more information, go to KetteringMinistries.org. Members are encouraged to attend our quarterly business meeting this Wednesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. This meeting will take place via WebEx video conference and requires member registration. The registration form is on our website, KetteringMinistries.org. Today, Sunday, April 25th, is the last day to register. Children ages 5 to 12, 
Join the children's ministry on Saturday, May 1st from 10 to 11 a.m. to make a special gift for mom and dad to celebrate Mother's and Father's Days. Parents, register your child online starting today, Sunday, April 11th through Tuesday, April 27th. Parents will be contacted regarding distribution of the craft supplies. For more information, contact the Children's Ministry via email at children at KetteringMinistries.org. Parents and guardians, have you ever wondered what you can do to help your children know God and continue to stay in a growing and thriving relationship with Him? Then join Youth Director Ryan Richardson via the Zoom platform as he shares research developed by LifeWay to explore the top 10 influencers of spiritual health. This event is open to parents and guardians of all ages. To register, please send an email to Ryan Richardson at rrichardson at KetteringMinistries.org. All Kettery members are invited to participate in the 2021 
we speak your marvelous works. We all, Lord, be mindful of the fact that it's only because of you and what you have done for us that we are even uh, able to, to breathe and move and to have a being. Lord, we get the glory um, through our worship. Lord, I ask that you be with each and every individual, uh, Lord, who is um, participating, Lord, uh, in, in this service. I ask that you would just give them the fresh anointing that they need to be able to, to do what they do this morning. And the Lord, for our pastor, brings the message. God, we ask that you use him in a very special and mighty way uh, to preach uh, your word and to do it with conviction, Lord, to do it with confidence, knowing, God, that you said in your word, your word would not return to you void, but it would accomplish that which you have set it out to do. Lord, we thank you in advance. And we give you glory for what you do. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we just stand on our feet and bless the name of Jesus? He is so good to us. Hallelujah. God has kept us another week. Jesus. Come on, just clap your hands like
you believe it, you clap your hands on the Oh, clap them like you're excited about what God is getting to do. I'm not looking at the present situation, but I'm looking where God is getting ready to take us. Tell somebody, look at him, and he's getting ready to send a Can you just lift your hands up him? Lift him high. Lift him high. Lift him high this morning. Son of God be lifted high. In the sanctuary. Yes. Lift Jesus high. Listen. The Son of God is lifted high. Son of God.
higher as they were singing it reminded me of uh, the scripture where Jesus um, uh, he's not them as orphans but he's gonna send someone uh, like himself being the comforter the Holy Spirit and then he goes on to say that he will not speak of himself but he will speak of me uh, because Jesus himself said if I lift it up all men to me. So we thank the praise team this morning for uh, opening their mouth and sharing from their heart. And uh, we need to lift the name of Jesus, glorify him, for he alone indeed is worthy uh, of the praise. Well, we, uh, as we worship, uh, we are mindful of the uh, from time we do have people who uh, and us as a church. Uh, and so uh, today, there may be someone who's, uh, for the very first time, you're visiting with us online and uh, you need to come and check us out, uh, see what's going on uh, here at uh, Catholic Baptist Church. And so uh, we want to be able to also uh, connect with you. And so we you would to text the word uh, connecting to 797979. If you for the first week, we, we ask, ask if you would time to uh, text the word connecting again to 9979 and uh, we'll then uh, back to you to just to let you know uh, a little bit about ourselves what we're about what we do uh, here at Baptist Church and I just want to acknowledge your presence and say thank you for deciding to uh, be with us today and so uh, we honor you and we bless the Lord uh, for you deciding to come uh, and worship us amen Amen. Uh, well, we uh, we want to continue uh, in our service and let you know what's going on here at Kettering uh, at the uh, AV Minute. Uh, bring the announcements for us today. <laughs> All Kettering are encouraged to attend our quarterly business meeting this Wednesday, April 20th at 7 p.m. This meeting will take place at the Webex video conference and requires member registration. The registration form is on our website, KetteringMinistries.org. Today, Sunday, April 5th, is the last day to register. Children ages 5 to 12 join the children's ministry on Sunday, May 1st from 10 to 11 a.m. Make a special gift to mom and dad to celebrate Mother's and Father's Days. Parents, child online. Starting today, April 11th through Tuesday, April 27th. Parents will be contacted regarding distribution of the craft supply. For more information, contact the Children's Ministry via email children at KetteringMinistries.org. Parents and guardians, have you ever wondered what you can do to help your children know God and continue to stay in a growing and relationship with Him? 
Then join Youth Director Ryan Richardson in the Zoom platform as he shares resources developed by LifeWay to explore the top answers of spiritual health. This event is open to parents and guardians of all ages. To register, please send an email to Ryan Richardson at rrichardson at kettleministries.org. All Kettery members are invited to participate in the 2021 National Day on Thursday, 6, 2020. This year's theme is Lord, pour out your love, life, and The prayer will host two virtual prayer sessions on the platform from 12 to 1 p.m. and from 6 to 7 p.m. Registration is required and available on our website. Spots are limited, so be sure to register for May 4th, 2021. Point of contact is Dominic Miller at 301-627-9500. Things Kettering. It's Mental Health Month and on Saturday, May 8th from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., the Health and Wellness Ministry will hold a mental health workshop. Register on our website through Wednesday, May 5th. We have guest speakers and organizations that will discuss mental health as it's to women, men, and young ladies aged 12 to 21. See you there. The Missions will be having its Spring into Service Outreach on Saturday, May 5th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will provide light yard work in the outer homes of our precious seniors. Note, COVID-19 safe practice and adequate protection will be provided. If you're interested, please register via the KBC did your child make the honor roll for the third quarter? In order to recognize the achievements of our third quarter honor roll students, the scholarship ministry requests that a copy of the student's report card be emailed to scholarship at kettering.org, fax to the administrative office at 1-780-8-8, no later than Friday, May 7th, 2020. If you have questions, please contact Cynthia Brown at 301-627-9500 or on scholarship at KetteryMinistries.org. Attention, C. Brown. Attention senior adults age 55 and up. The Education Ministry is having a discipleship class for seniors addressing the subject of the essentials of Christianity starting Saturday, May 15th through Saturday, June 26th. It will take place on the WebEx platform, so you will need to register. Registration begins today on the church website. All seniors 55 and up are welcome. Point of contact is Pastor Williams at andre.williams at KetteringMinistries.org. For more information, go to KetteringMinistries.org. Amen. Amen. As you can see, there is plenty uh, that is happening uh, here at Kettering Baptist Church. And we thank the Lord just for the privilege and opportunity to be able to serve uh, and to minister uh, in the spirit of excellence. And so uh, we uh, ask that you would uh, just give your attention to those uh, announcements as they affect you uh, both corporately and uh, individually as well. Amen. Well, uh, we want to now take the opportunity uh, to pray uh, for uh, some um, special uh, people today, uh, and that is uh, children uh, who are being abused, uh, children who are being taken advantage of, and that is a, uh, an issue that is very uh, prevalent uh, Lord, uh, throughout uh, our society as well as throughout our world. Uh, and um, and they're uh, innocent uh, individuals who, you know, they can't protect themselves, and so it behooves us as adults to do all that we can do uh, to um, to seek to uh, protect uh, those uh, who can't help themselves, who can't protect themselves. And so today we want to take the time now to pray uh, for abused children. Let's now look to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we, we come this morning uh, recognizing, Lord, that uh, you, uh, you love children, Lord. You love uh, the, the precious little ones, Lord, that... Uh, you created uh, in your uh, image and likeness, Lord, and you um, you desire, Lord, that uh, that they be protected, that they uh, not be uh, 
taken advantage of and used and abused, Lord, by people who, uh, who know better uh, but choose uh, to do otherwise. And so, Lord, we're asking, Father, for their protection. We're asking, Lord, that you would provide uh, vehicles and avenues with which, Lord, they would be able, uh, Lord, to have safety, uh, to be um, to be protected and uh, from those who uh, would seek, Lord, to bring harm to them, Lord, to, from those who would seek to uh, to just take advantage of them and to use them for their own benefit. And so, God, we know uh, that uh, you desire, Father, for us as adults, uh, Lord, to do all that we can do because we recognize, Lord, that uh, as we too were once, you know, young children ourselves, uh, Lord, and we had people who looked after us. So too, Lord, we're asking God that you would also help us as, as adults uh, at this time to, to do all that we can uh, to seek the protection and safety, uh, Lord, uh, for those children, Lord, who are uh, out there and uh, some are in very uh, horrible conditions. And uh, Lord, we know, God, that uh, you would uh, just desire that they would be uh, protected and uh, look after, looked after, Lord. And so uh, we ask, Lord, for your grace. We ask, Lord, for your mercy. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, just blanket them, Father, with your love, blanket them, Father, with your, um, uh, with your, with your mercy, with your grace, Lord. And we know, God, that uh, as you have uh, said in your word, Lord, that to whom much is given, much is required. And as we as uh, people of God, uh, have been given uh, biblical principles um, for which, Lord, we can apply, uh, Lord, to to, uh, to seek the protection, Lord, of those who are helpless and those who uh, can't help themselves. And so, Father, we ask that you would just have your will and way in this situation, Lord. Bring glory to yourself uh, as uh, as you seek, Lord, to uh, to provide protection and safety, Lord, for 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 abused children. Lord, we bless your name and we honor you, Lord, in advance. Uh, for what you're, uh, what you're going to do. We claim the victory in this situation because we know that you always do cause us to triumph uh, in Christ. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. 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 Uh, well, we want to show our appreciation and gratitude to the Lord for all that he's done for us uh, as the Lord has given us the opportunity uh, to give back to him a portion of that which he has given to us. It is now offering time. Here at Kettering Baptist Church, there are multiple ways to give unto the Lord. One option is through e-giving, which can be found on our website, KetteringMinistries.org. Another option is through text giving to 301-246-8018. And following the prompts, our KBC app is an option and is easy to find by searching for Kettering Ministries on Google Play or iTunes. Yet another option is through Facebook by searching Kettering Baptist Church Legacy Center and selecting Shop Now. And of course, you can always give in person or by mailing your offering or donation. Thank you for giving. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege that is ours, Lord, to give back to you a portion of that which you have placed in our hands. And Lord, you've called us to be faithful stewards. You've called us, Lord, to be managers, Lord, over uh, the resources that you have provided. And we're grateful today that you said in your word that, uh, Lord, you're able uh, to, um, to provide for us in accordance to your riches and glory. Uh, and so, God, we're praying that you would help us as we invest into the kingdom Lord, we pray that we would be confident uh, in your word, which says that as we give, uh, Lord, that it would be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Lord, we ask God that the resources um, that are used Lord, that um, that are uh, provided, Lord, we pray, God, that it would be used for the furtherance of your kingdom, that more souls would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so, God, we bless you and ask that you would bless both the gift and the and the giver. Use it, Lord, uh, as you see fit. Bless the hands that will handle it. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Hallelujah to Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Salvation and glory. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Oh Lord, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God Hallelujah. is mighty. Yeah. Salvation, Salvation and love. glory. Anybody know honor and power? Honor We serve a wonderful God. In the midst of it all, we serve a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Honor and power. Unto the Lord our God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord, Lord our God is omnipotent. For the Lord our God. The Lord yes, Lord. Our God. He's wonderful. He is wonderful. When you think about your life, all you can say, God is wonderful. Lord oh, praise it to the King. The King, the King and the Lord.
Somebody ought to clap your hands if you know we're serving wonderful God. Clap those hands and tell him he's wonderful. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. But tell him he's wonderful. I'm not the one that saved you. I'm not the one that delivered you. But open your mouth and tell the king of kings. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. There's nobody greater than you. our glory and our praise because he's even given us the breath that we have in our bodies so we give it back to you lord we give you all that you are due lord you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore Every heart that is broken So great are you, Lord We say it's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise Pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only. Great God, you're a great God. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope and you restore. Every heart that is broken. So we cry out today. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath. Our in our lives. So we pour. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our
our hearts will cry These dry bones will sing These dry bones will sing Great are you, Lord
look high and low yeah, yeah. Still could find nobody Jesus. Nobody great Nobody great Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. John said as I stood there, there were people gathered from every tribe, nation, and tongue. Hallelujah. And when they looked upon him who had been crowned king of kings and lord of lords, all the nations, all the people began to, to shout, glory, hallelujah. They praised him high and lifted him up high, for he was king. Even as the praise team was singing that song, I couldn't help but put myself in the midst of those tribes, nations, and tongues, glorifying God for all that he had done, blessing him for bringing me out of darkness and into the marvelous light, thanking him for being so good to me and being so patient with me giving me another chance and another chance and another chance I just couldn't help myself but 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 put myself in the midst of those that were worshiping him and giving him glory and honor and praise because on that day we realized there's nobody greater Bless his name. Glory to God. What a presence of God in this place on this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing up in just an extraordinary way. Bless his holy and adorable name. Thank you, praise team, for letting God use you on this morning to bless us, enter into his presence. On this morning, Kettering, if you have your Bibles with you, and you should, I want to invite your attention to 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings chapter 13. Uh, we'll begin our reading in 2 Kings chapter 13 at verse number 20. 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse number 20. For those of you not aware, on this morning, this morning has been designated as Blue Sunday, Blue Sunday, and this is a Sunday where we actually take time to acknowledge and recognize uh, and pray for specifically those children who have been abused and are being abused and uh, violated in such uh, horrendous ways, and so we, uh, our, um, Pastor Williams offered a prayer for them on earlier on today just want to keep that before you as you pray throughout the day continue to pray for those who are going through such abuses and such um, addiction uh, I'm sorry not addictions but uh, such violations 
uh, as we see going on in our country and our world, uh, many of whom are going through it in their homes, but then others are being taken from their homes uh, through sex trafficking and, and et cetera, et cetera. And so children have indeed become a target of the enemy, and uh, we want to continue to pray for them and pray for the situations before us. Amen. Second Kings uh, chapter 13, you uh, should be there by now. Uh, verse 20 uh, reads as follows. Then Elisha died and they buried him. And the raiding band of Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elijah, he revived and stood on his feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, revive us today. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak a word in this place today. Lord, let your word carry out from this place, even over the air rays, through Facebook, through YouTube, through any other venues, the website or whatever other social media venues it may travel, but let your word not be prevented today from accomplishing what you have already ordained for it to take place. Father, someone is dead and in need of revival. Someone is hopeless and in need of hope. But God, I'm praying on the this, this day that your word, God, would speak life to those who are dead and breathe revive them from their spiritual deadness. God, I'm praying that your word would meet someone on the pages of their life who've drifted away from you, God, and that they may be drawn back to you, Lord God, as the hope of their life. Father, I'm praying that encouragement might be brought through the word of God this morning, that someone, God, who's discouraged and didn't know whether they were going to make it through the day would not only make it through the day, but make it through the year. Spirit of the living God, I'm praying even now that you would use me, God, as an instrument to accomplish your will, to speak as the very oracle of God. I am in need of you, Lord, that you might provide me the strength that I need, the clarity of thought that I need, the clarity of speech that I need, that every word, God, that comes forth from my mouth might be clearly spoken and might meet the target that you set it out to accomplish. Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender all to you this morning that your will might be done, your way might be accomplished, and your glory might be revealed. Father, in all that is done and said, we will give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, for it is in your name we come praying and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Katherine, we've been on a journey for the last uh, several weeks, um, preaching through a series of messages entitled Miracles. We began our journey in Acts, uh, I'm sorry, in 2 Kings chapter 6, uh, spoke to you there from the subject matter, the Acts head miracle. We moved from there to Exodus chapter 14 and spoke about the Red Sea miracle. And then uh, from there in the third part of the series, we were in John chapter 5, preaching from the subject matter, the poolside miracle. And then on Resurrection Sunday, we were in Isaiah chapter 53, talking about the resurrection miracle and letting him know that Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. When we were there in Isaiah 53, we learned in that miracle that that miracle, uh, through the midst of that miracle as it related to Jesus, that he was vehemently rejected. Not only was he vehemently rejected, but he was vicariously suffering. He suffered in our place that we might uh, escape the suffering that was coming our way. And then finally we learned in that miracle of resurrection that uh, he was victoriously risen from the dead. He rose from the dead with victory in his hand and because he lives we live I thought it was just important to remind us that we can live today because he lives is somebody understanding where we are this morning praise the name of the Lord and for those that are, are, are with us on this morning whether in presence or whether uh, via live stream or some social media platform this morning we find ourselves again in second Kings but this time not dealing with Elijah but dealing with Elisha and in this particular text, uh, we find uh, Elijah entering into the text uh, of the story that's going on somewhere around verse 14, literally, he enters in the text, and at that particular time, Elisha is uh, sick, and he has 
uh, come upon a sickness, and it is that uh, sickness that he is enduring and going through that is literally going to take his life. He, he's uh, sick unto death, if I can say it that way. And while he is there on his sick bed, sick unto death, the king of Israel, Jehoash, uh, or in some I may just name, may call him just Joash, but but Je- Jehoash, he actually comes to the king, and you need to understand something. Uh, uh, the king rather comes to Elisha, and you need to understand that first of all, this king is not a good king. He's not he's not an upright king. He's an evil king, a king who is walking in the ways of Jeroboam. He's chasing after idols. He's following the ways of Jeroboam and doing all that is evil in the sight of the Lord. But when the man of God uh, gets sick unto death, this evil king of Israel, this idol-worshiping king of Israel comes to the man of God and weeps over him and honors him and blesses him and lets, in essence, his whole action say to him, he respects him. And when I was reading through that, it helped me to understand that even though sometimes folk don't do what you tell them to do and how you guide them to do, they still understand and know who the real deal is. And so Joash, or Jehoash, whichever you want to call him, the king of of Israel, this evil king, even though he wouldn't do right, even though he wouldn't follow uh, the king of kings and lord of lords, he would not surrender to uh, Jehovah God, but rather worship other gods, even he knew that the God of of, of Elijah was the real deal. He knew that Elijah himself was no fake prophet. He knew that what Elijah said would surely come to pass. Are y'all still here with me? So Elijah takes him when he comes uh, to his bedside and he takes his hand and he says bring your bow and so the king brings his bow and he puts his Elijah puts his hand on the king's bow and he tells him to shoot out the window uh, toward the east and so he takes the bow and he shoots uh, an arrow out of the window and he says to uh, the king he says this arrow that you've now shot out of the window is symbolic of the Lord's deliverance on your behalf over Syria. And then he says to the king, now king, take up the arrows and strike the ground. The king takes up the arrows and he strikes the ground three times. And Elisha turns to him in anger there on his deathbed and tells him, you should have struck the ground more times than three. For his striking of the ground represented his faith in God. And he says, now, since you've only struck the ground three times, you'll only be able to strike three blows against Syria. Had you struck the ground six or more times, you would have utterly destroyed your enemy, Syria, who is on the way. Y'all still here with me? And so, uh, Elijah then dies, which is where we pick up in our text in chapter 13, verse 20. It says, then Elisha died and they buried him. I want to talk to you on this morning in the fifth part of this series from the subject matter, the after death miracle. The after death miracle. There are three dead people in this text that I've read in your hearing. And as we examine this text on this morning, I aim to show that death does not stop the miracle working power of God. Somebody should get happy right about there. This text begins by helping us and showing us that miracles happen through the dead. Elisha died and they buried him and the reality of Elisha's death removed the hope not only for some but more specifically for the king Jehoash that Elisha's words and his promises would ever come to pass. Elisha had just told him, uh, the fact that you have shot this arrow out the window means that God is going to bring deliverance over your enemy, Syria. And then he says, strike the ground. He says, he struck the ground three times. He says, the, 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 the three times that you struck the ground are the three times that you're going to strike Syria in victory. But now Elijah dies. 
And when Elijah dies, the king loses hope that the words and the promises that Elijah have given him have died with him. Don't, don't, get, too, don't get too mad at the king because we too have a tendency to give up hope and to throw in the towel when the promises of the deceased <laughs> Lord have mercy when, when the deceased's promises seem to have died with them y'all still here with me uh, I, I, I know that uh, we have situations where in families, can I just talk about families for a moment? We have situations in families where grandma told you she was going to give you that, that nice table in her house. I'm preaching way better than y'all saying amen. But grandma never got around to giving you that table. Grand, grandpa never gave, got around to giving you those tools. <laughs> A great grandma never got around to giving you that china. And they died. And when they died and they left no will that said they had left the items to you, it becomes family feud on your side of town. Help me here, Jesus. Because the promises that they made died with them and oftentimes when folk have given promises and given their word and they die our hope of the word ever being fulfilled died with them stay here with me I remember some time ago I met a man and the man said um, he was going to bless uh, our church he enjoyed the ministries here of our church he was a very wealthy man he says I'm going to bless the ministries there and he said I don't believe in just blessing the, the, the church I believe in blessing the pastor too so I was thinking, wow, because this dude had a lot of money. So I'm thinking I'm going to get me my million dollar check any day. And he died. And the hope of my millions died with him until I started reading this text. Come here, somebody. I'm trying to help you to see that the miracle working power of God is not prohibited by death in this text in this text the, the miracle that it happens through the dead um, verse 21 says but when this uh, Elijah dies and, and 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 they give you kind of a background what's going on Elijah died they buried him so you know in other words all hope is gone of Elijah he's done his words are done his promises are done that's what's in the minds and then what happens is in the springtime there's these raiding bands of Moab that come in to the to the land of Israel and they're 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 raiding the land they're robbing people they're taking from people everything that they have and while that's happening it, there's this group of uh, of Israelites that are burying a man and then when they saw the the raid of uh, the raiders coming, the band of raiders coming, they hurried up with the burial of the man. They couldn't finish burying the man where they had a they had planned on burying the man. And and then what? So what happens is they end up uh, quickly putting him in the tomb of Elijah. And when they put him in the tomb of Elijah, Lord help me here. When they put him in the tomb of Elijah, thinking, watch this, that not only all hope was gone for Elijah, but they thought all hope was gone of their friend and when they lowered their friend down into Lord Jesus when they lowered him down into the tomb of Elijah the Bible says when he touched the body of Elijah through Elijah's dead body a miracle happened y'all still here I'm trying to show you that miracles happen through the dead this miracle that happens when the body touches Elisha's body, the miracle happens through the body of Elijah. And watch this. this. This miracle that happens, it fulfills God's promise to Elisha that he will receive a double portion of what Elijah had. Lord, help me here. Y'all remember when Elijah was walking with Elijah and he told him, if you see me when I leave, uh, I'll be able to honor you with what your request is. And he asked him, he says, now, what's your request? Quest. And Elisha said, I want a double portion of what you had. Lord, help me, God. I want twice the power that you have. I want twice the anointing that you have. I want, I want God to double up on what he gives me than what he gave you. And this miracle, Lord Jesus, can I help somebody here? When Elisha died, he was short of the miracles of the double miracles of Elijah but after this miracle now watch this I'm trying to help you to see something he's dead Lord have mercy the hope of anything else happening seems to be 
over, but God still works a miracle through Elijah after he's dead. Whoa, Jesus, I'm, I'm getting happy right here. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited because, because it, it lets me know that death doesn't stop the miracle working power of God. Matter of fact, some of you right here this morning are here. Lord, help me. You were saved out of the darkness by the mighty miracle working power of God from the prayers and promises of your great, great, great grandmothers and great, great, great grandfathers that prayed before you even came along. Lord, see to it that my children's children's children know the Lord. Help me God. You didn't even know great great grandma. You didn't even know great great grandpa but you got saved because of their prayers after they were gone. Lord help me. Some of us are walking in the favor of God walking in the blessings of God of prayers and promises from folk that are long dead. And we thought when they died, the prayers and promises died with them. Lord, God help us here. We thought that when, when, uh, when, uh, let's see, when some of the old folk had passed away, all the work that they had done passed away with them. No, the, the power of God is still working through the dead. Lord God. The power of God is still working through Martin Luther King. The power of God is still working through Harriet Tubman, Lord. The power of God is still working through pastors that have gone on long ago. Sermons that they preached long ago. I've got hope even now that the words that I've preached, the sermons that I've labored in, even after I'm gone, I've got I've got encouragement to know that miracles can still happen through the power, Lord God, even after I'm dead. Y'all still here with me? Miracles, they happen through the dead. This miracle to this, uh, this Israelite happens through Elijah, even though Elijah is dead. Watch this buried and decayed can I Lord, I just need to stay here just a little bit longer even after not just hope is gone but all hope is gone God still works a miracle through Elijah just as he did through Christ. I, I, I had to come back to that one. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm going to circle back to that one. But watch this. Miracles not only happen through the dead, but miracles happen to the dead. It, it's, it's here in the text. I'm not making nothing up. The, the, the Israelites are busy burying this man and much to their amazement when they quickly put this dead man's body now y'all got to see this picture they've got a friend and they're they're trying to do the normal burial but they don't have time because the raiders are coming and and they don't want to get robbed and pillaged and hurt and harm themselves and so they hurry the burial along and temporarily we'll just put his body in the tomb of Elisha Lord God, I'm not even sure, according to the text, whether they knew it was Elijah's tomb at the beginning they were putting him in. All they knew is we need to put him somewhere so we can get out the way. Lord, help me, God. And so in the process of them taking their friend, whom, watch this, if they're burying him, they already have given up hope on the fact that he's alive. Because you don't bury folk that's alive. So watch this. So they take him and they quickly put him into the tomb of Elisha. And watch this. And the dead man, this is the second dead man. Elisha was the first dead man. This is the second dead man. Now the dead man that they're burying, a miracle happens to him. It's right here in the text. It says, 
that when they lowered him, the man was let down and touched the bones of Elijah. He revived. Look at that. And stood up on his feet. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I'm having too much fun here. I, I like this because there's one thing to get <laughs> revived. <laughs> But it's another thing to be revived and stand up. Lord God. I'm, he, he, he touches Elisha's bones and the dead man. A miracle happens to the dead man. Now the dead man is alive and the dead man stands up. And I need you to know that our God specializes in miracles to the dead. Help me God. I'm, can I call up some witnesses this morning? I've got some biblical witnesses this morning that can let you know that God will bring dead folk back alive. Can I go down by Zarephath and talk to the widow there? The widow at Zarephath will let you know, Lord help me God, that God can bring back a dead boy because he brought back my dead son. Then I go over to the Shunammite woman and the Shunammite woman will tell you that God brought back my dead son. He was dead and God brought him back. Lord, help me, God. Then let's go down to the widow of name and the widow of name will tell you that God raised my son up from the dead. Jairus will say, my daughter was dead. I went to see Jesus, but God, Lord, help us, raised her up from the dead. Everybody knows the story of Lazarus when God went to the tomb at the fourth day and everybody says, show enough. He stinks by now, but God specializes in raising up the dead. Help me, God. And if I don't have no other witnesses, I can go to Calvary. Help me, God. And at Calvary, Oh, Lord God, we, we know he died, was buried for three days, got up on the third day. Lord, help us. The, the miracle happened to the dead. Can I, can, I, can I go one step farther? Miracles don't just happen to dead people. Miracles happen to dead things. Miracles happen to dead situations. Can I get any witnesses in the house? Dead finances, miracles. Dead marriage, miracles. Dead, dead career, miracles. Well, Lord God, God specializes in dealing with dead things and blessing dead things and raising them up to life. Can, can, can I talk to somebody this morning? I, I, need to, I need to step a little farther into your business this morning. You've got some dead stuff. And you've given up all hope of it ever coming to pass. I stopped by here this morning on my way to glory to let you know that God specializes in, in bringing dead things to life. Lord God, and your dead situation is not past the miracle working power of God. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to move on, but, I, but the spirit won't let me move on. I, I, your dead stuff is not beyond, wait, wait, wait. I know what the lawyer said. I, I know what the doctor said, but, but, but God, his, his miracle working power is not, it's not limited by the fact that the lawyer, the doctor, the scientist has rendered it dead. No, because our God is the God who created the doctor who's practicing. Our God is the God who created the lawyer who's practicing law. Our God, he doesn't practice, he is life. And so dead stuff don't bother him. Y'all still here with me? 
And so I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Maybe it's somebody here in the sanctuary. Maybe it's somebody online that just needs to know that your dead situation is not beyond the miracle working power of God because miracles not only happen through the dead, but miracles happen to the dead. Are y'all still here with me? All right, let me, let, me, let me see if I can dig down just one more time. In, in this text... We see that the miracle happens through Elisha, a dead man, to this Israelite who's being buried, a dead man. But miracles not only happen through the dead and to the dead, but miracles also happen for the dead. Mm. I'm I'm, going to see if I can build on this. When Elijah became sick, he gave King Jehoash a promise that God would give him deliverance and from Syria and strike Syria three times. But, as I said earlier, when Elijah died, this spiritually dead pagan worshiping king of Israel had all his hopes of this victory fly out the window when, uh, with, with Elijah's death. So here's the third dead man. The third dead man in the text is King Joash. He's spiritually dead. And the fact that he's spiritually dead, Lord, help me, God, helps me to understand that God works miracles for the dead. Watch this. When King Joash heard that Elijah had died, no doubt he hung his head and thought, even though I didn't worship the living God, even though I didn't, I didn't do right, I realized that, that God, Lord help me, that God maybe can do something, but then, then when they said, well, he's buried, he's been buried for a while, his body has decayed, it's down the bones now, all of his hope is gone. All, all his thought process that this is going to work out is gone. And so no doubt fear comes into his heart. Fear comes into his life. But then, watch this, when the news comes that a dead Israelite was lowered into the tomb of Elijah, and watch this, and even though Elijah's body was dead, Dead, and even though Elijah was dead, the, the message that God is still working through Elijah gives hope to this dead worshiping king. Stay here with me. I'm trying to help us to understand that God works miracles oftentimes to let the spiritually dead know that you can still trust in what I said. Help me, God. Some of us, can we just be honest this morning? Some of us were spiritually dead and we were not just sort of dead. We was good and dead. And we saw God do miraculous things in our lives. We saw God save us from hospital visits. We saw God raise up grandma. We saw God protect us in accidents. We saw God do miracles in our lives. We saw God bring children out of dead wombs. We saw God do things that were impossible. And in that miracle, it caused us to believe God can do anything. And God works miracles he's working miracles every day to let the spiritually dead know you can trust in me he's working miracles all the time to let the spiritually dead know my word is still good he's working miracles every day touching lives every day dealing with heathens every day working out stuff in their lives every 
every day, feeding them every day, clothing them every day, keeping them on jobs every day, even though they're still high, even though they're still violating the rules, not coming to work on time, they're getting paid right every day. God is working miracles every day to show them his amazing grace and that he's capable of doing anything but failing. So God is working miracles for the dead so that the dead can know I'm God. And death doesn't stop my power. Death doesn't hold back the power of God. God is working these miracles after miracles after miracles. I don't know if anybody ever had miracles happen in their life or you ever seen some. Some of those miracles may have brought you to Christ. Honestly, it may have been the thing that says, you know what, if God can do that, I need him in my life. And some, some, some of us came to Christ because we saw God work miracles in other folks' lives. So if God can straighten out JoJo, I know he can get me right. If God can take her off the street, I know God can deal with me. If God can make them put down that alcohol or that drugs, if God can change their life, I know there must be hope in God. God is always working miracles in our midst for the spiritually dead. Now, the greatest miracle that he ever performed for the dead was for all of us. Y'all still here with me? The, the, watch this. He performed, I'm going to say, a series of miracles in order to, watch this, and all of the miracles he performed were just for the dead. Because we were all dead in sin, shaped in iniquity. Lord, help us here. And we had no hope at all. But God, who specializes in miracles for the dead, he sends, watch this, he, he unwraps himself of a royal diadem and it's a miracle that he steps. just for the spiritually dead. He performed all of these miracles for the dead. All to prove to us, to show us beyond a shadow of a doubt that I specialize in life and I, Lord help me, I don't want you to be dead. I, I came so, watch this, so that the miracles can work through me because the miracles that we have of everlasting life, the only way we can get it is through him. You can't get it any other way, but it's coming through his dead body that was laid out on Calvary. He died, Lord, help us here, to pay for our sin debt. So watch this, so the miracle comes through his death. Lord, help us. But it not only comes through him, but it comes woo, to us. It comes to us who are dead in sin, laden in trespasses. We couldn't get out. It came to us and it came for us that we might be rescued from the sin of debt that was yet to be paid, the eternal separation from God. It came for our benefit. And so miracles happen through the dead. In the text, it comes through Elijah even though his body was dead. It comes to the dead. They come, miracles come to the dead. The man who's being lowered into Elijah's tomb, he's dead, but the miracle comes to him. And then finally, miracles come for the dead. It comes as witness to the dead for their benefit that they might have faith in God. 
Joash as king now has faith that the promise God made through Elijah that I'm going to strike Syria with the arrow and three times I'm going to have defeat. I'm going to have victory over him. Joash, uh, well, listen, a pagan unbelieving king in Israel now has his hope restored in a living God because of the miracles that are not hindered by death. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you that you might speak now to the lives of people who are listening. Some at home, in the cars, in the bedrooms, kitchens, living rooms, family rooms tuned in, listening. Some here in the sanctuary listening. But God, I'm praying right now that you would begin unleashing your miracle working power. I don't believe this preaching exercise this morning was for the purpose of entertaining, but it was for the purpose of encouraging the dead. It was for the purpose of letting us know that our dead situations are not hopeless because you live. That our dead lives do not have to remain dead because you live. That there's nothing that's too hard for you even beyond death because your power supersedes the power of death. And so, Father, there may be someone listening on this morning who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior of their life. I'm praying, God, that today would be the day that they would surrender their heart and their life to you. How many more miracles do you need before God is someone you God have to step in and show you that you can't trust man. You can't trust in yourself. You can't trust in your friends. You can't trust sometimes even in your family, but you can trust me. How many times does God have to send you that message before you surrender? I'm praying, God, that right now today that someone listening to me would say, Today, God, I surrender to you. I surrender my dead life to you. God, revive me and cause me to stand up. Stand up as a witness. Stand up under the power of your grace. Stand up and be a man of God. Stand up and be a woman of God. God, raise them up from their spiritual dead position. Spirit of the Lord, I'm praying that you'd move on the life of my brother or my sister who's listening. And cause them to realize, God, that even that situation that seems impossible, that nothing is impossible with you. That relationship, that marriage, that financial situation, that career, whatever it is, God, what, however dead it may seem, God, I'm praying this morning that you would cause them to understand and realize that death can't restrict your miracle working power cause them to continue to have hope in you and to reach out for the victory that you have father in the name of jesus i just surrender and submit all the needs of your people unto you this morning that you might have your way in their life do it today god in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Change, change, change. Oh, change. change.
Listen, if you're listening on this morning, you're here this morning, and you want to surrender your heart, your life to Jesus on today, I want you to take the next step. I, I, I know the spirit of the Lord has a way of bringing upon the conviction, and you know, God, God, you're speaking to me. You're talking to me. Well, I want you to take the next step. I want your next step I want you to do. I want you to text the word surrendering. Because you're surrendering your life. You're surrendering your heart to God this morning. I want you to text the word surrendering to the number 797979. Just text that word surrendering. Once you text that word surrendering to the number 797979, there's a video that will come up and it'll explain to you very clearly how and what you need to do according to the scripture, exactly what you need to do to turn your life over to Jesus. And there'll further information that they'll collect from you so we can follow up with you. We want you to go all the way through, follow through the steps because we want you to grow in Christ. We don't want you to just come to Christ and be left. We want you to grow in Christ. So if you want to surrender your heart to Jesus on today, just text the word surrendering to the number 797979. Now, even for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, same thing. Just text that number. Now, if, if you, you've been listening to the ministries, you've been connecting with the ministries, and, and, and this morning you're saying, you know what? I really enjoy the ministries of Kettering Baptist Church. I believe that's where I want to be a part. I want to be a member there. And guess what? We've now become a hybrid church. We're, we're here, we're there, we're everywhere. We've got people joining from all over the country. You can do that. So what I want you to do is I want you to text the word committing. I'm committing to be a member of Kettering Baptist Church. Text the word committing. To the number, you text that, that word committing to that number 797979. We'll, we'll connect with you. There's, there's information there that we'll collect from you when you, when you turn, tune in. And we'll collect the information from you. And then we'll follow up with you. And then you'll be able to walk with us all the way through our new members' classes. Everything's being done virtually so you can connect right in. And when we, when we go from there and we extend the right hand of fellowship, we'll do that virtually. And you can do that hybridly here or in, in person or, or online. We do everything. So it's, we, God has changed the church. And so we're, we're, we're changing with the change. And so wherever you are and whoever you are, if you want to commit to the ministries of Kettering Baptist Church, just text the word committing, committing to the number 797979. All right. Now, here's what I want to do on this morning. Because I, I just believe that God is, his, his, his spirit is still, still working. I, I believe he's still speaking. I believe he's still ministering. I'm going to close this out in prayer. But I, what I want you to do. While, while we're praying on this morning and, and closing everything out, what I want you to do is if you need a miracle from God, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. I'm not talking about you got $5 in your pocket and you need 50 more cents. That's not a miracle. Because we can get that for you before you leave. Matter of fact, I got 50 cents right here. No, but if you need a miracle from God, you're standing on the edge of a need of a miracle from God. I, I just want you to exercise your faith this morning. And I, as I'm praying, I want you to extend your hands. I want you to extend your heart towards the prayer. And just agree with me in prayer. That God will bring it to pass according to his will in your life. But here's what I want you to hear. I want you to hear that death didn't stop the miracle from coming. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? God still has plans to finish what he started because, Lord help, he, he will complete whatever he began. Y'all still here with me? So, so I just want you to extend your hands, extend your heart, whether you're, you, whether you're in your kitchen, whether you're in your bedroom, no matter where you are. But I do want those online, if you're, if you're listening online, you're listening via live stream, except for those who are driving in your car, I want you to stand up. Okay, I want, if you're driving, don't stand. If you, if you can stand, you're listening via live stream, I want you to stand up. We're going to extend our hands towards God, and we're going to pray together. Father in heaven, we need you on today. Let the glory and the freshness of your Holy Spirit ascend on your children this morning. 
Father, I'm praying that whatever the need, no matter how long it's been, no matter how impossible it is, I'm praying with my brothers, I'm praying with my sisters, praying with my children, praying with them this morning, God, that you would show yourself strong. Lord, the enemy is sowing seeds of deception in our heart and in our mind. He's causing us to believe it can't happen. It's been too long. It's impossible. It'll never happen. But God, I, I, I'm, this morning, I'm believing you. I'm believing what your word has shown us that death can't stop the miracles from happening. And so, God, in the lives of my brothers and my sisters this morning, as they extend their hands towards you, I'm praying that the power of the Holy Spirit, praying that it would fall fresh, praying that it would move from their hand to their head to their heart. God, I'm praying that the power of your Spirit would begin stirring up even of old promises prayers that were targeted for them God I'm praying that this morning they would extend their faith beyond what they can see I'm praying God that they will believe you that there's nothing too hard sickness disease somebody God is saying this morning God I, I know I know what the pastor is saying he, he, I, I, I kind of understand what he's trying to say but I, God the miracle I wanted was you to save my mom and God this morning I hear you say I've got your mother safe with me I've got your brother I've got your father they're safe with me and because I live they live I've already fulfilled that promise. And one day, we all together, all tongues, all tribes, all nations, all the children of God will be gathered up together to meet him in the air and we'll all be together with the Lord, worshiping him, glorifying him, praising him. Father, fulfill the promises in the lives of your people this morning strengthen their faith eradicate the negativity that crowds their mind and God let them grab hold to the true reality that you can make it happen you specialize in bringing the dead to life and you can do it father i'm praying praying for my grieving brothers and sisters praying for my hurting brothers and sisters praying for those that are going through this morning praying for those lord god that they just don't know what the next turn is they don't know what the next thing to do is they're praying for wisdom praying for direction i'm praying with them god help them through jesus guide their footsteps open up a door that was closed open up a possibility that seemed impossible provide for them even where it seems impossible do what you do best Jesus have your own way father as we come down from this experience with you today we come down glorifying you we come down praising you we come down exalting you we come down God acknowledging you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords now to the king eternal the everlasting and all wise god to him be glory majesty dominion and power both now henceforth and forevermore all the people of god said together amen amen amen
has come over. Has come over.